Question of the day, what's your favorite Dustin Hoffman movie? And if you don't say Hook, I'm not sure I can trust you anymore. Now, today we're taking a look at Papillon or Papillon, but most likely Papillon considering it's French for butterfly. And you know, if there's one thing we know about the French, they love it when you mispronounce words in their language. But we're taking a look today at Papillon from Colossal Games, all about garden building and tile placement and uh, butterflies on bushes and pollination. Let's take a look how this game plays and if it's something you should check out in that quick genre right now. So here's the end result. I wanted to show the end result first, and we're going to kind of Quentin Tarantino, Christopher Nolan our way back to the beginning of this game. Uh, but here's the end result of a two-player game. Notice that the flower bushes have butterflies clipped all over them. That is how we're doing our majorities at the end of the game for the most amount of points that you can get, is who has the most butterflies on said bushes. These are set on random planters that you'll put out there at the beginning of the game. In a two-player game, you're going to do the first player points and the last player points there for the end of the game. Now, if you're playing with more players, there are more flower bushes over here, and there are more planters out there, so you have a more variety in how to play. I wanted to show you the end result of what the flowers are going to look like in the game before I explain how this even gets to this point. Notice you have these cool laid out flowers all over the place. I know there's a glare right there, but you're actually not missing much except that tile. Um, your goal is to, when you draft the tiles, and we'll talk about that in just a second, when you draft the tiles, you're going to put them out in such a way that you close in a flower section. So if you notice here on the yellows, there is no side in which I can add a, here, let's move that just to be even more clear. There's no side at which I can add a yellow piece to this, which is going to connect it. Notice this would be against the green, that would be against the green, that would be against the green, green. Now, had I been putting in this piece, this is open currently. That means that I could put something there and continue this if I wanted to. If I wanted to continue that yellow this way or this way, I could. But if I put this piece here, boom, that yellow is now closed off. Anytime you close off a flowered section in your uh, garden, you add a butterfly clip to that area. When it's time to do the pollination section, that's when you'll take the butterflies from here and put them on that colored flower bush over there, which is how you score the majorities. When you do it with three, you gain a bonus token that'll allow you to put an extra butterfly from your supply over there. If you do it in just two, a la this, you don't get that bonus token, but you still get to put out the butterfly. That is the pollination section, and that's kind of the scoring section. One other thing I wanted to talk about, though, is how you draft. So when you, put, when you start the game, you're going to draft these tiles off in a kind of unique way. In a two-player game, they're only going to be set up to there. In a three-player, four-player game, you're going to set up more tiles on the board. So just for sake of reference, since we're playing two players right now, uh, I'll show you the, and I'll show you what the difference is when you're playing with more players. There's a, a bidding phase for turn order. In this, there's no bidding phase for turn order. It's just simply the person who takes this gnome. Sorry, I didn't realize I was off frame. Simply the person who takes this gnome is gonna be the one who goes first. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose a row or a column, row, column, to take the tiles from. So say I choose this row here. Well, I would get all three of these tiles to add to my garden. Let's just say in a bigger player count game, this had happened and there's only this left and you say, well, I really want this tile, but I don't really want those. If you choose to take one tile, you always reach into the bag and grab another random one. So you always have two tiles when you're putting your tiles on the board. If you choose to take the gnome in a two player game, you are the one that goes first and then you get the points associated with it on the back at the end of the game. These tiles that have caterpillars on them, they will get a caterpillar token. In a two player game, they're basically straight points at the end of the game. In a more than two player game, you're gonna bid on these uh, caterpillars for turn order. So it's simply a way where you can choose to go later to get more caterpillars or you can choose to go earlier by spinning the caterpillars that you have so that you can have first whack at these areas. Now, the reason that's important is because when you're taking uh, tiles, it's important to know, okay, I need that tile to really expand my territory. Is at the end of the game, you're gonna score majorities based on the flower bushes here. You're then gonna score total amount of caterpillars left over. Then you're gonna score closed in butterflies. So remember earlier we were talking about closing in your um, flowers, but if you close in a, a meadow or a, you know an empty patch like this, or let's just say we do it like this with three tiles. So I've closed in, well, I haven't quite done it with that one. Gosh, it'd be great if I had a real tile that would help me out. Here we go. So I've now closed in this green section between those two uh, bird baths. See that? There are two butterflies in that section, which means at the end of the game, I'm going to score two points 
based on the fact that there are two butterflies in there. That's what this symbol means, is butterflies enclosed in um, blank areas. You're then gonna score your largest patches. You're gonna get a point per tile in your largest patch. Over there, uh, in that one that we saw a minute ago, Carla has five tiles involved in this red patch here. One, two, three, four, five, six, excuse me, six tiles involved in the red patch. And you're gonna do it for your top two biggest tiles. So she has six and four, which is 10 points there. Any bonuses from the uh, gnomes, etc. final score, person with the most points wins the game. So that's Papillon. It is in fact a quick, quick tile placing game in which you're trying to get the most points based on your board, but also majorities. There's a majority system. But what I like is that once you choose to put your butterfly a certain place, you're not essentially stuck there. You can move it elsewhere during the pollination phase. And I think that's cool um, the way that's written in the rules and you can do that and kind of move it around and hopefully you'll get the most points by being strategic about where you put your butterfly. So that is nice to know. Papillon, though, is a quick tile laying game. I do like the fact that it's very pretty. It looks amazing on the table from the 3D flowers to the butterfly clips. I think that's a cool system that could have been done with something else, but they chose to go full bore production value and do that. And I think it looks nice and it shows off because of it. It's one of those games you walk past the table at a convention, you go, wait, what's that? So I'm very pleased with the way Papillon looks. How it plays, it's quick. The tile drafting's fast. You pick a row or a column, you put those into your menagerie over there. So you put the tiles into your garden and then you you know, see how many butterflies you're able to pull off onto the flowers from that action. I think that's cool how it does that, how you kind of strategically do it, but it's not overthinking, right? You're not sitting there like, well, wait a minute, do I take this, this, or this, and oh man, they just killed me, because there's usually something you can use from the tiles out on the board. Obviously, it's still important to go first, so you have first blush at all those tiles, but there is nice to know that you're never really gonna get stuck. You just might get to put out less butterflies, but then again, Maybe you're trying to close in those uh, open areas so that you can get all the butterfly points at the end of the game for that. So there is some variety there. I will say this. My one gripe is, though, unlike another quick game that we just played in this kind of fast uh, paced, kind of fast themed sort of game, is Draftosaurus. Whereas there are multiple strategies you can take and say, okay, I'll try it this way, this time, or this way, this time. Papillon, it's pretty straightforward. Everyone's going to be jockeying for the same thing. Now, whether you say, well, not necessarily, maybe they're going for the largest of those flower bushes. That's true, but the most points still at the end of the day come from having the butterflies on the different bushes. So while you can have a nice large um, section of two bushes, I don't see that that's a total winning strategy. You know, someone's probably going to get on here and fire this comment and say, no, you're totally wrong. And that's great. I'd love to see that. But in our experiences, we didn't see that happening. So um, it still comes kind of from the majorities, especially if you're in first place. If you're not in first place, well, then that's a totally different thing. Obviously, you have to go for something else. But you could space it out, I suppose, and do some here, 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 and get second place, maybe third place, and then have a huge section on the board. That's a possibility, too. But... There's a lot of variation in the um, in the colors on the board. It just looks really pretty. Again, uh, style looks good. Play, it's fast. Anytime a game is fast and plays fast, and it always feels pretty much like your turn because the only thing you're waiting on in this in this game is for those um, the drafting, and that's not very long at all. So it's quick. It's got a lot of replayability in the fact that you're building this thing that you can try better next time. Uh, again, the only knock I have for it is the strategy isn't supremely varied, so it's not a point salad game, which may or may not be something you enjoy, but it's also not even just a, hey, this strategy might work better this time. You still kind of have to follow the same railroad strategy. But if you like quick games, if you like pretty games, I think you should definitely check out Papillon. It's pretty, it's quick, it does a good job on the table of getting people's eyes. It also is a fun strategy game, very easy to introduce people to as well. It kind of reminds me of Carcassonne with some of the rules, right? You know, the following into multiple tiles. So you could probably introduce this very early on in someone's board gaming uh, career, addiction, whatever you want to call it. So I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram at Dice Tower Brian. And if you are coming on the cruise, let me know down here and I will see you. Let's play a game. Until next time, we'll see you. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth.
I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.